Welcome to another edition of Talking Giants. We are doing our post-draft player breakdowns. And so instead of just doing, I don't know, Andrew Thomas or Matthew Pert, the very next one is none other than a guard that we pick up in the fifth round, Shane Lemieux. It looks like Joe Judge and Dave Gettleman needed more investment on the interior. Uh, Bobby, do you think this was need and value, or do you think this was just value? Definitely value. Um, I don't want to assume he's going to maybe like compete for center, but the matter, you know, the matter of the fact is Spencer Pulley is the only official center on the roster right now who I don't have much faith in. I know, I know you believe in him a little more than I do, but Nick, the other two people who are candidates, Nick Gates and Shane Lemieux, have been practicing center reps this off season. So I do think it'll be, I think he will get a shot at that. I'm not going to sit here and say he's going to take that starting job day one, but this was value and it could turn into need if he can play center. Um, and I'm a big believer from round four on, you never draft for need. You just take whoever you think is the best player available. And that's what, you know, the Giants, like the Giants last year, the decision was between Darius Slayton and Caden Smith. But say Darius Slayton's off the board. They draft Caden Smith. Caden Smith is not a need. You've got Evan Ingram. You've got Red Ellison. But at that point in the draft, you just take whoever's best on your board because, you know what, guys get on the field and look now. We have a Caden Smith, a backup, who is a good player, and say Evan Ingram's injury concerns can continue, then he's someone that I think at this point we would be okay with starting. So I'm a big believer of fourth round and on. You get your BPA, and I really think Shane Lemieux fell into that category. Awesome. And we're going to go through his plays. I personally, for me, Bobby, I like knowing that if Hernandez or Zeitler go down, that we have a competent guard who could fill in. So this is about getting the 53, not necessarily the 11 on each side. Um, so we actually, this is a, this, for me, this was a, a, a total value pick. Uh, I would have loved to have somebody else on defense in the fifth. There were some players out there, but uh, if you have a guy who was an All-American, started every game in college, and he's got a little mean streak to him, so I like what he brings to the team in general. So yeah, for, um, for the first time in a long time, the Giants have depth on the offensive line. Now, we still have a Nate Solder problem, but I think we can all assume he will start this year. He's making – it's just – this is a business, and he's making too much money to not start. But let's say Nate Solder starting and Spencer Pulley starting, center, which I, I wouldn't be huge on. You have Shane Lemieux, Nick Gates, and your third-round pick, and Matt Peart. So it's a – for the first time while we got some death pieces that would be excited to see. And he's a pretty decent athlete, you know, the five, one in the 40 for a big lumbering center. And he runs like he plays. It's just like a train down the field. So, uh, but he is limited in certain things. He, you know, his, his arm length get pointed out whenever he has some, some struggles in pass sets. And we'll go through a couple of the pass sets. Um, you know, there's, there's really a lot to like, though, in terms of his power and his drive and actually his recovery. I noticed a lot of that, too, in past sets as he can recover, uh, doesn't totally lose every rep, which is kind of what you need sometimes when you're not perfect. So first play, Bobby, it's a pull. And he nice hits kick it. out block. It's the inside shoulder. I mean, that's when you're pulling, it's you go for the inside block because that defender is taught to rip on the on the inside shoulder of, of the guard. So. Good job there on the kick out. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't like lay the guy out, but nonetheless does the job. Keeps that left nice shoulder. square base too. Yep. And you were saying this is your favorite play because here comes that tackle. Yeah, the tackle messes it up, but it's my favorite play when the guard has the kick out and the tackle gets to pull and be a fullback for a play. Yeah, running back right or right though, which is good. Next play, pass set. I liked this one a lot, Bobby, because um, if you look at – how much the guy gets into him. His base gets real wide here, which is probably the only thing. So, yeah. right – go ahead. And we'll see, you know, later his struggles are. Sometimes that he gets that guy at the inside move. I like – this is where he finally, like, kind of opens his hips a little bit, which is okay as a guard, especially with that – with, you know, at five yards of depth and, and washes him out instead of trying to just square him up. And, like, I think one of his issues is he has a really good first punch. And sometimes he over relies on that first punch. Yeah. This is where I picked up. He okay. He can anchor. Boom. Right. Yeah. We, we you, you need to see down. more of that in his pass sets because, like I said, sometimes he's leaning where you know he has the ability, like you said, to to put his hips 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 forward and lean back. So it's there in the pass the game. I thought this was funny. It's just a big man running. Not <laughs> yeah. There's a guy. few of these. <laughs> uh, 
I, I mean, at least he's downfield. I guess he's expecting that running back to catch him. He probably gave him crap in the huddle, too. So yeah. Who are you? He, he, he's pretty good getting to the second level of linebackers, but in screen plays, sometimes he looks a little lost out there. But it's, it's about getting down the field and trying to put a, a hat on a hat. Yeah, there's a couple of them. So this one, obviously, is a waste. You know, it happens. I, I really like this one. You can tell, you can tell his, uh, he, loves to, he loves to fight on the inside. Yeah, keeps the guy out of his chest, too. And, you know, this is his own blocking scheme and just keeps that outside shoulder of, uh, of the DT. Hands are late, though, Bobby. Yeah, I mean, his hands are on him first. And you see he gets them underneath, which is, like, once he gets them on there, it's, it's good. But like you said, he does need to get his hands on there first. But I will say, like, for the most part, he usually is the guy, you know, with his hands on the other guy first. That is, yeah. Yeah, it seems kind of be like a theme of the Giants with their drafting is guys who have that recovery ability. <laughs> That's funny. I noticed that with McKinney a bit too. Here's a here's a good one, Bobby, because I think he loses this one early. So he comes right on his inside left shoulder. Now he's got the elbow to the throat. That's fun. But then he anchors. Yeah, he had him on skates for a second. You see, but he isn't, yeah, I mean, the balance isn't great, I would say. So this wanna... is where he struggles, man. It's with that inside move. When he's got a guy lined up on, on his outside shoulder and he shoots inside, he struggles with that. That's where he needs to become more of a technician in the pass game. And and because sometimes he lean, he'll, uh, if we're looking at the same play, he'll lean, he'll lean forward and he'll want to get that hit. Yeah, I and, see but, it. On this one though, it's just like he's he's waiting for this guy to bull rush into him, and he just hit he hits him inside and he looks lost on it. He did hit him inside. I think he yeah he was looking for that. And see how that left leg went wide, and then he missteps. Look at the straight arm to the chest. It was a good good pass rush by the defender. So Bobby, we didn't draft a perfect player in the fifth round. <laughs> Stop hey. it. Doesn't it ain't gonna stop me from getting excited about the guy? I know, I know. All right. This Auburn game, man, was a lot of fun for me. I mean, the first play, he just destroyed. I think it was Nick Coe, man, and he just first punch, just whoom, and just puts him to the ground all in one motion. This one, he's chipping. Good chip. Second level. Very good. I mean. He, well, guys in the NFL have a hard time getting to the second level off those double teams and, and knowing when to come off. And that is something that st sticks out for Lemieux is able to do that and that kind of transfer into the pass game when he does have a, a, you know, a free blitzer coming at him. The first thing I thought of is when we broke down Austin Jackson and he went to the second level and he didn't know what to do with his arms. <laughs> you know, he didn't know how to square up. And this, I mean, this, guy is, this is like going up against a sled the way he makes this block. I mean, that's, that's perfect the way he loads up and gets his arms into him. And he finishes the block. <laughs> Here's the next play. Inside again, Bobby. Like I said, you see him lean there. He leans right into him. He's trying to, like, have this knockout blow. And I don't know if this will go through this play, but there's another one, man, where sometimes it works and he, he just – he'll he'll blow a guy up, but – I mean, in the NFL, you can't try and blow everyone up every single play. He'll just shock you with that first punch Yeah, is basically it. And he wants to he win needs the to learn. He needs to get that first punch and then learn to use his feet after that because he, he'll kind of like do that first punch and his feet will stop. Yeah, this one was easy for the, for the guy because he got all of his lean over on the left side. I mean, look at every other offensive lineman there and look at the way he was leaning on that first punch. Yep, but what I like about it – Look who recovers, <laughs> you know? Yeah. He had a quote um, when in his, in his post-draft interview with the Giants where it says, I'm, I think I'm the toughest guy in this draft when I put it on film, and, and it does show up. And, you know, this was an awesome game against Auburn. Yeah, obviously not perfect, but Auburn had Nick Coe, Marlon Davidson. You know, he didn't get many reps against Derek Brown, but when he did, he was successful. I think that was kind of a theme for the Giants as a whole was like, how do these guys do against the best competition? Yes. And so this, I love this rep, Bobby, because he never stops. So it's a bull rush. He handles bull rushes pretty well. He's just snatching chains on the inside of that chest, staying inside. We see him re anchor there. Yeah, that's an awesome rep. That's <laughs> an awesome rep. Fighting, man. Yeah. 
That demoralizes the defensive lineman. And then you have to chase the quarterback out of the pocket because he was sitting in there for eight seconds. But, yeah, that's a great rep. There's another one. Malls on this play. At the goal line, gets movement. I mean, he gets, he gets three yards of, of movement on this guy by the time the end of the play. Fans, those 300-pound boys smashing gravities against each other. Who is the bigger man? This is why some of those crazy drills were invented because sometimes it's a matter of pure willpower. And you can see the defensive lineman. He is anchored, right? Like he, he has some off-sea vessel where he just drops his anchor and he's still getting pushed off the ball. Can't describe how hard that is to move a guy who wants to do nothing else but plant all of his life force into the ground and he's still got him. Yeah. It's great. Got beat by an inc- by well actually this one's interesting Bobby. Play it again. Lost the hand fight, and then a rip. <laughs> He's watching him. Wow, this I thought this was a really good rep. Yeah, he goes for that inside move and kind of dumps him. Yeah, this time this time he picked it up. If they come right in his face, I'm very comfortable. Even if it's power coming at him, he just knows how to set those back heels, you know? Anchor. Look how low he is. Look how wide that base. Kind of, I, won't, I don't want to say it reminds me of Judge Wills, but it reminds me of Judge Wills how wide his base can get in those yeah. pass sets. Hands are, they're both fighting for inside leverage, too. That's great. Yeah, I think overall, he's someone who's a mauler. He's got things to work on. He's got things to work on technically. But we don't expect him to be a starter day one. But if there's injuries, I think we're comfortable with him filling in. I think it was great value in the fifth round. He's a mauler. Hopefully, he can transition the center, and that fills that need in this draft. Um, I like Shane Lemieux. I think it was, you know, obviously, Andrew Thomas is the best pick in this draft, and I don't want to say he's the best player, but – I would say it's the best value for, for your buck in the fifth round. So I had to look it up, Bobby, because it was killing me. But this is the first time since 1962 that the New York Giants have drafted three offensive linemen in the first five rounds. So they haven't done this in 60 years. Was there even Super Bowls in 1952? A 62. And I, think, I don't think so yet. But <laughs> – championships there were still championships they had drafts so my call for defense was answered in the second and fourth round and I'm happy with that I'm fine with that we have more work to do uh but I mean with the drafting of all these offensive linemen I said it the other day next year you just go out and get whoever you want maybe that's the right tackle I don't know but I'm just saying you go out and get whoever you want next year whether it's a pass rusher whether it's Jamar Chase from LSU depending on where we're picking. Maybe he might not fall down to us at 32, but nonetheless, you pick whoever you want. Don't you believe this has – this is starting to turn in a situation where we don't – we're not as worried as much anymore around can we fill five, you know, on the offensive line, that it's sort of – you feel a little bit better now and you're starting to think of options that you have if anyone goes down, that you, you start to look at those options and they say, hey, those are reasonable options for us. Uh, yeah, we forward. have real depth for the first time. Um, we'll see. Like I said, we still do have a Nate Solder problem. That is a problem. How will Matt Peart uh, grow? If, is he ready next year? Is he ready the year after that? There are some things he needs to work on. He's got all the technical stuff there. I'd like to see him be a little meaner. But Andrew Thomas is your left tackle for the next 10-plus years if the guy can stay healthy. And Shane Lemieux might be a really nice piece for us moving forward. So, practice snapping the ball, Shane. Practice snapping the ball, Shane. We'd love you at center. Uh, but that's it for us for this one. And, uh, Bobby, thanks for joining again. Uh, we'll be back soon.